Hello and welcome to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of everyone who's helping to lead worship today, we welcome you. We're so glad that you're joining with us in this time of worship. If it is your first time to worship with us online, we are particularly excited that you have chosen Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church today, and we want to encourage you and everyone who's joining in to use our contact form today. The link to that is pinned right in the comment section. There's a QR code that's appearing here as well that you can use. And uh, this is a wonderful way that we can connect with you, that we can get to know you, that you'll be able to share that all important email address so that we can get you our e-newsletter that has all of the information about opportunities to serve and to be in small groups and to connect in so many ways. Uh, so use that today. And there's also a place in there for your prayer requests that goes straight to our pastor's and to our prayer team. So we do encourage you to use that contact form. Now, when we gather for online worship, we covenant together to participate and to be a blessing. When we promise to participate, that means that, well, we're going to go ahead and participate in this time of worship. This isn't just a video that you're watching. This is worship of God and with one another. So please go ahead and turn off other devices and distractions. Go ahead and fully do what we're doing. When it's time to pray, pray. When it's time to sing, stand up and sing and just fully participate in what we're doing. And then we covenant together to be a blessing. And that means that the way we're in the comment section together, the way that we are with people we may be gathered with right now to worship, the way that we're sending all of this worship out into the world, we want it all to be a blessing to everyone who is involved. Now today is Bible Celebration Sunday with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. We're so excited about that. You're going to learn more about that as we continue on together. But if you have a Bible that you regularly use, you may want to go find that and uh, bring it so that we can have your Bible available during our message time. This is one of mine I've brought along that we'll be, I'll be using later on in the worship service. So if you have that Bible, go ahead and grab one so that you can uh, fully participate in that message time as well. Again, we are so glad you are here. Welcome to worship. Hi, I'm Addison. Hi, I'm Karis. Hi, I'm Gabe. Hi, I'm Miss Lori. Please receive this call to worship. How beautiful is the word of the Lord. How, How wise are God's commandments. commandments. Through the Lord's teaching, we gain understanding. Through God's wisdom, we find truth. The Lord is our God. We are God's people. God's word lives within us, for it is written on our hearts. Living word, great teacher, lead us and guide us. Amen. Please join us in singing Our God.
Hi, I'm Ed Sims. I'm on trustees and I'm a member of the praise band. Please join me in the spirit of prayer as I pray our opening prayer. God of understanding and truth, be with us in this time of worship. Open our minds to receive your wisdom. Open our hearts to accept your love. Open our spirits to embrace your ways. Be present with us as we seek your guidance that we may follow in the footsteps of your living word. Jesus Christ, amen. Please join with me in the sharing of the peace of Christ. You can say, peace be with you, and respond, and also with you. Share that in the comments with one another, and with me, and with the folks of our church community. Peace be with you. Hi, I'm Randy Ginder. I'm a member of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, and peace be with you. What's up, I'm Isaac, I'm a member of Douglas Avenue Methodist Church, peace be with you. I'm Sue. And I'm Randy Burge, and we're part of the Douglas family. Peace, peace be, be with, with you. you. I'm so excited. I hope you are too, because it is time for small talk. I want to encourage all of the children who are joining with us in online worship to get in really close to your device and your screen so that you can see and hear everything that goes on with small talk. This time is led by Miss Laurie, our Director of Children and Youth Ministries, and her assistant, Laud the Lamb. So come in close right now for small talk. Hello everybody and welcome. I am Miss Lori. This is Laud the Lamb and Cohen his helper. If you hear a dog barking outside, that's our dog Luna, who interrupts every small talk we ever do. But today, we're not just talking about football. We're talking about guides. And I was so surprised this year to find out that football has a guidebook. Williamsville, Football guidebook. I know, shh, I'm not showing the, the whole book and the plays and the things, but there's a guidebook for football. There's also a guidebook for life. A Bible. They come in all different shapes and sizes, from little kids to grown-ups and study Bibles. And this is what God has given us as a guidebook for our life. Right, Juan? Yeah. So, today, what's so exciting about today, yes, it's a football Sunday or a Saturday or just about any day of the week anymore that you could be watching this, but on this particular Sunday, it is Bible Sunday. And that's where our kiddos, third through fifth grade, receive a Bible and our youth, sixth grade on up through high school, will receive a Bible, not the same Bible, they're a little bit different. So, if you are watching this at home and you don't didn't have a chance to come to church on Bible Sunday, give the office a call and we will have a Bible ready for you or your child or youth at the office, okay? Because this is our guidebook. Always important to have a guidebook, even in football. Have a great day, guys. Bye. Hello, I'm Ed Boer, longtime member of Douglas Church. Today's reading from the Bible is 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 10 through 17. Let us open our hearts and minds to hear what God is saying to us through this reading. So the writer says to Timothy, now you have observed my teaching, my conduct, my aim in life, my faith, my patience, my love, my steadfastness, my persecutions, and my suffering the things that happened to me in Antioch and Iconium and Lystra. What persecutions I endured. Yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. Indeed, all who want to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. But 
wicked people and the impostors will go from bad to worse, deceiving others and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it and how from childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for re reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every good work. May God bless our hearing and understanding of the Bible reading we have received today. Amen. At Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, we're holding our Bible celebration beginning on Sunday, September 26th, and then continuing through the week. We are so excited to give age-appropriate full translations of Bibles to children uh, in third through fifth grade, and then to youth in sixth through 12th grade. Giving Bibles to young people is a long-standing and joy-filled tradition at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. During worship in the sanctuary on Sunday, September 26th, and again on Sunday, October 3rd, we're presenting these Bibles. If you would like your child or youth to receive a Bible, please just let us know. We'd love to include them during these worship services if you're able to join with us or simply be able to gift kids and youth with a Bible. So I encourage you to please use the link that's in the comment section or the QR code that'll link you to our sign up for Bibles and, and please sign up for those. So as we're giving Bibles during this season, I wanted to take this opportunity to share about the Bible itself. And so this will be that point that if you have a Bible that you use or want to use a little bit more, this will be the time to get that Bible and have it handy if you would like as we go through, um, as we go through this time. So what is the Bible? The Bible is a historical collection of writings, songs, histories, sayings, and remembrances collected over thousands of years by hundreds of people. The Bible is not written by a single human author or source. As a matter of fact, most of the Bible is anonymous. The Bible that we read in our modern languages is a final revision of thousands of years of collecting, editing, adding and subtracting the whole book's selections and stories. Parts of the Bible date back to oral tradition and existed in the folk memory of God's people for generations, long before being written down in any form, not to mention the translations that we read today. And I have two of my Bibles here, my um, study Bible that I use, and then uh, my uh, carry-on Bible that I uh, carry around with me all the time. So that is why, with all of the people that are involved in its telling and writing and editing, it's important to pay attention to original sources, authors, and editors in so much as we can to best understand the Bible. Now with all of that said, with all of this complex and intricate textual history, uh, of editing and translations, all of those things. Christians believe that all of the people involved, from authors to editors to storytellers to compilers, that all of them were inspired and guided by God's Spirit to produce the Bible that we have today. Our reading for worship today that Ed shared with us from the Bible, from the second letter to Timothy, emphasizes this for us in chapter 3, Verse 17, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every good work. Okay, what is in the Bible? I encourage you to grab a Bible, that hopefully that you have with you. This is my study Bible that uh, is really big, and I thought it would be easy to be able to see this part, so I brought this along. Um, so the Bible has two major divisions. The Old Testament, which is the part at the front, 
and makes up most of the Bible. As you can see, it's like this big, hefty section here. And then the New Testament, which is at the back part of the Bible, which is a much smaller piece of it. You can see right here, um, that lower part right there. Excellent. Now, some Bibles also have a third section in the middle called the Apocrypha. My study Bible has this, and that's this little middle section right here. Now, this is called the Apocrypha or Deuterocanonical books. And Deuterocanonical is our SAT word for the day. It means secondary collection. These are Old Testament books that are accepted by authoritative by some Christians, notably Roman Catholics, but not by all Christians, notably Protestants, like us United Methodists, or by Jews. As these are apocryphal, we generally don't spend time with them in worship, but you may find them in your own Bible. As we do this next bit with our Bibles, you may find it helpful to look at the table of contents in your Bible. So I brought my um, carry-on Bible, the one I carry around all the time, and I'm gonna open up to my table of contents. Those are generally right in the front of your Bible. Here's mine, it's really nice and easy to see. And I think we're gonna have a picture of it up close so you can see it too. Now, the Old Testament is the book of Judaism that is traditionally broken into three sections. The Torah or law made up of the first five books of the Bible, sometimes also called the Pentateuch. This is Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Then there's the prophets, which also includes the histories with books like Joshua, 1st and 2nd Samuel, and then all of the prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel, the major prophets, and then the minor prophets, Hosea through Malachi. And then there are the writings, which include the wisdom books, like Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Job. And then the rest of the books, like 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Esther, and Daniel. Now, the New Testament is much shorter, as we saw uh, earlier, it's that short little piece at the back end. It covers the life of Jesus and the writings of the early church leaders. And it is also traditionally broken into three sections. The Gospels, or Good News, which tell of Jesus' life and teachings, death and resurrection, and include the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and then connects in the Acts of the Apostle, which is basically volume two of the Gospel of Luke. Then we have the letters or epistles, which were written by early church leaders to provide um, advice and guidance to the first Christians. And these include letters written to churches like Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, and Philippians. Letters that are written to individuals like 1st and 2nd Timothy, which read, Ed read from us uh, today, for us for today, and also Titus and Philemon, like that. And then there are general letters like James and 1st and 2nd Peter. And then there's the revelation of John to John, the revelation to John, which only includes the one book that we often just call Revelation. This is a singular book, both in its style and content and in the method needed for reading. Within all of these books, Old Testament to New Testament, we can find many different kinds of writings encompassing all kinds of genres and styles. These writings come from many different cultures through several different languages with sometimes strange and unfamiliar imagery and contexts. I believe that many of the misreadings and misunderstandings of the Bible come from a failure to appreciate the genre and context of its writings. Which is why today, if you don't remember or learn anything else from this time, I hope that you will hear and remember this. It's my first and only rule of Bible study. Read it as it is for what it is. Why don't you say that with me? Read it as it is for what it is. And uh, one more time, in case you were fixing your coffee or it stepped away, let's say it one more time. Read it as it is for what it is. By this, I mean when we read poetry, we need to read it as poetry, not as science. When someone writes they had a dream, we need to read it as a dream and not as a documentary of the future. It's important to read all of the Bible and learn what it says about itself and to pay attention to what it might have meant for its original audience's culture and context 
and to read the genres as the genres that they are. Let's try this out by looking at a piece of poetry in the Bible. There are amazing and powerful and just beautiful sections of poetry in the Bible. We may not always recognize the poetry because our translations have lost the meter and rhythm of the original ancient Hebrew language in particular. Some of these poems were originally songs which were passed down by oral tradition and probably sung for generations long before being written down. One of these is the Song of Miriam. It's found in the book of Exodus at chapter 15, verses 20 through 21. You may want to find this in your Bible now if you'd like to. Exodus is the second book of the Bible right at the beginning. And again, it's chapter 15, verses 20 through 21. And I'm going to read. Then the prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her, and with tambourines and with dancing. And Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. One of the reasons I wanted us to read this is that based on its grammar and vocabulary, many scholars believe that this is the oldest directly quoted portion of the Bible. These two brief lines of poetry may really have been composed by the prophet Miriam herself right at the time of Hebrew people escaping Egypt and Pharaoh's armies as a celebratory song of victory and thanksgiving. In Miriam's song, we hear Miriam exult, God has thrown horse and rider into the sea. Because this is poetry, we know that she isn't suggesting that God's hand bodily came from the sky, picked up an Egyptian horse and rider, and then chucked them into the sea like a baseball. We know that this is a metaphoric description of God's use of the wind and the waves of the Red Sea to halt the advancing Egyptian army and allow the Hebrew slaves to escape. We know this because we have read the rest of the story, so we know the poetry's context. And we know that the poetry of songs uses rich imagery and metaphors like this. That's what makes poetry powerful and meaningful. Now this may seem like a really basic idea, but I think it's surprising how often what is obviously poetry in the Bible is read and explained as if it were a technical handbook or historical description. From the creation hymn at the beginning of Genesis and the poetry of Psalms to the dreams described in Revelation. Too often these powerful and deeply metaphorical poems are lifted out of their context and then used and misused. That is why it is important to read the Bible as it is for what it is. Because that is when the full power of the Bible is made real. You see, the Bible is the Word of God when we read it as such. When we engage the Bible as God's Word in the full richness and variety of its forms and genres, with the depth of its context, we then engage the living Word of God. And that has the power to inform, explain, challenge, and gift God's love into people's lives. The Bible has power to change lives, and that is why it has authority for us and for God's people from generation to generation. I know this experience in my own life. I find that when I read the Bible, pray with Scripture, and engage in study with other people, my faith grows. I am comforted, and I am challenged. The truth about God's love and purpose for my life and others comes into focus and I'm called and equipped to live as a faithful follower of Jesus. I find it incredibly powerful to engage God's word in scripture because it's not just about God. It's not just about me or just about me and God or even about my church and God. For generations and generations, faithful people have encountered the living God through the Bible. 
People from all times and places. People of all genders and sexual identities. People of all nations and, nations and languages and races and ages. When I engage the Bible, I become a part of that story, that experience, that common discussion with faithful people around the world. The Bible is so alive in this way. It's not a weapon to use to hurt and exclude other people. It's not just a record of what God has done in the past. The Bible tells us who we are and whose we are. When I encounter scripture, I see myself, my reactions, my troubles, my triumphs in the people I meet in the Bible. I hear God's response to me and to my community and God's response to them. And I come to better understand God's relationship to humanity and to all of the creation. I come to understand and believe how deeply, thoroughly, and passionately God loves me, loves you, loves everyone. I come to understand how deeply, thoroughly, and passionately God calls us to be a part of God's purposes of love, mercy, and justice throughout all of God's creation. So we're going to continue to give Bibles, to read the Bible together in worship and in study, engaging it as it is for what it is, in all of its richness and varied genre and tensions and love and grace, the powerful living word of God fulfilled in Jesus Christ. I encourage you to connect with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church to learn more, to get with a small group for study, prayer, and conversation too, so that you can more deeply experience and engage and be transformed by your encounter with God and with other people through the Bible. Amen and amen. Please join us in singing, Thy Word is a Lamp. My name is Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup, and I am the executive director and pastor of Wouldn't It Be Lovely. And Wouldn't It Be Lovely is housed here at Douglas Avenue, and Douglas Avenue is my home church. If you will pray with me. Good and gracious God, our hearts are full of gratitude for your generous, unconditional love. We thank you for all of creation and the beauty we see when we look. We thank you for the gift of life and its amazing diversity. We are grateful for the gift of our own lives and the lives of those we love. We thank you on this day for your church, for our church, for all the ministries that come from this place and all the people that make it happen. We are grateful for our faith in times of trials and in all days. Dear God, we thank you for the children 
who were and will be given Bibles on this day. May your holy scriptures come alive for each and every child. Be with our children, parents, and all those that lead and mentor our children in faith. Especially we ask you for the healing hand of those children recovering from surgery, illnesses, depression, and anxiety. We pray for this church in the days ahead. Renew and strengthen our commitment to this neighborhood, this community, and all of the world. Give our leaders imagination to envision new ministries and new ways of doing things in a new world after a pandemic. Give them courage and renew their faith in you and their love for one another. Especially we are grateful and pray for Pastor Meredith and her leadership. Gracious God, we cannot pray today without asking for your healing and comforting presence for all those in hospitals and intensive care units battling COVID-19 or other serious diseases and conditions. We pray for their caregivers and for all the workers who risk their health to serve others. We ask you, O oh God, to draw near to those who might be hungry or lack housing or dignified work. Surround those who are grieving among us and those that are carrying many untold burdens. Be with each of us in times that we can be filled when we have doubts and despair. The pain of this world can be hard to fathom and it's often hard to take in. But we do know this, O oh God. You put compassion in our hearts to tend to the vulnerable. You give us wisdom and knowledge through which we can respond to the needs of this world. You give us courage to approach with hope the neighbors that we don't even know. All this is the will to follow your will. This prayer we lift up to you in your name who taught his disciples to face both gratitude and fear by praying this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning, and thank you for your dedicated support of the missions and programs of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. You may not realize how your support is changing lives right here in our community. Today, I want to talk to you about a way for you to put your faith into action that is very close to my heart the annual crop walk. This two mile long walk will be held next Sunday, October 3rd. It will begin at 3rd Presbyterian Church on North 7th Street at 1.30 p.m. in the afternoon. During our walk, we will walk by agencies that are working to eliminate food insecurity in our community. I am coordinating the activities here at DAUMC and I'm asking for your help as either a walker or a sponsor for those who are walking. On your screen right now, you will see a QR code that will take you directly to our Team DAUMC signup page. On that page, you'll be able to register as a walker or pledge to help support those who do walk. You can also use the drop down menu on the DAUMC online giving portal, or you can email me at obo00 at yahoo.com. That's O-B-O-E-0-0 at yahoo.com. Of course, all your support means so much to Douglas Avenue. Whether your support of the general fund, wouldn't it be lovely, compass for kids, the community garden and micro pantry, or one of our other missions, you are making a real difference. As you know, there are many ways in which you can give. A few minutes ago, I spoke of our online giving portal, which can be found on the church website. You can also set up payments through automatic bill pay at your bank via ACH Bank Draft using the church's bank or by bringing or sending your check to the church. No matter how you give, I want you to know that your support is greatly appreciated. Please join us in singing O Zion Haste.
Thank you so much for joining in this time of online worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. We just hope this whole experience has been uplifting and meaningful and powerful for you, that you will join with us again for online worship or join with us for worship in the sanctuary on Sunday mornings at 8.15 and 10.30 a.m. at the Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church campus. We love you, love to worship with you. We love to pray with you. So please use that contact form. That's the best way that we'll be able to connect with you to uh, help you to come up alongside you in your life of faith and connect you with all the ministries and missions as well as that place that is there for you to put your prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and prayer team. So please use that contact form today. And now as you go into your day, go knowing that God loves you completely and gives you God's living word to light your path, that Jesus Christ loves you and goes with you every day, and that the Holy Spirit is there to open your heart and show you the way in powerful love and ministry every day. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen.